In this video, I'm going to show you how to use quick table calculations in Tableau. In particular, we're going to do running total and moving average. I'm going to get started right now. All right, here we are in Tableau, and we're just going to use a superstore data set. Really simple. All right, and let's let that load up. I'm going to just get rid of all this extra stuff. Don't need any of this just to clear it out. All right. Okay, so let's begin with what a quick table uh, quick table calculation is. There are inbuilt formulas in Tableau that let you do certain types of calculations. In the quick table list, um, let me show you what they are. So let's just do an order date, you know, by month or something. And I'm going to bring in just the sales. Right, so I've got a line. Now what this represents is just from one time period to the next, so this is by month, right? So you can see it's going January, February, March, April, May, June, July, etc., etc. Now that is just telling me what happened on that month, but maybe I wanna know, well, that, so this value plus this value plus this value over time. So things like a running total, difference, percentile, what are the other ones, year to date calculations, anything that runs over time, right? But it doesn't, it's not only just time, but typically that's kind of where you use it. Um, you can use these type of calculations. So let's do a side by side comparison and let's get rid of these labels for a moment. Okay, so let's make this top one a bar. All right, so this is kind of like, month by month, but if I wanna see a running total, it's as simple as going quick table calculation. You can see all the ones that are available here, and you can do additional modifications to these, uh, depending on which one you've chosen. So let's say running total, right? And you can see that it's actually adding up. So let's test this so you can see how it's doing that. Let's go bar and let's add labels to everything. Um, and to make it easier so you don't have to do this, I'm just going to rotate it, okay? So it's actually going upwards, right? So you can see, and what I'll also do is just to make it simple again, let's just get rid of these just to stretch out the data a little bit, right? So just kind of looking at the starting parts. So you got 14 plus 4,000, which is roughly 18,000. You can see 18,000 there. So 18,000 plus 55 is 74,000, and then adding 28,000, it adds up again. So it's adding each day and then kind of going forward. And that's great, fantastic. So let's switch this back. Let's get rid of that filter. Go back to what we had and just rotate it, right? So that's great. So that is the most basic running total. But then sometimes you wanna do things a little bit different. What if I wanted to know the running total by year and then every year it starts again? Right. So what I can do is, for example, in here, I can bring the order date in again. Right. I'm going to right click drag. I'm going to bring it in here. I'm going to use the discrete year. And what that's going to do is going to split up my data like so. Right. Very good. But the problem is with this quick table calculation is that it's continuing on all across the table. So this now, uh, that means we're now getting into kind of the topic of what a table is, what a pane is, and what a cell is. Okay, so let me show you the effect and then I'll explain it. So if I right click here and go um, compute using, instead of the table, which means it applies to the whole set, I can go down one and go pane, which means it's just, oh, let me leave that hovered, right? It's just this. So that's a pane that's a pain, that's a pain, and when it doesn't work, it's a pain in the, okay? So what we do is if we go in here, go pain across, you'll see it starts again for each one, right? Now, another thing you can do is, uh, let me just find it, okay. There it is there. Now, um, I'm gonna restrict this to just two years. I'm gonna show you a little interesting thing you can do with this. All right, so let's just keep this. And the reason is just um, because it's a labels uh, issue. So let me go here into um, edit table calculation, right? And you're gonna notice something in here. If you kind of zoom, if I, actually I'll zoom in, don't, you, don't you zoom in, right? You'll see this number that gets added. 
what this is actually telling you is the direction of the quick table calculation, right? And this is very important because sometimes you'll have a grid where it kind of goes in all sorts of directions. So let's do that as an example so you can see. And you can tell I'm kind of recovering from a bit of a cold. So um, let's do, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go month, right? I'm going to add, let's say week, week, uh, not weekday. Let's go week number, something like that. And then let's go year, right? And then let's go sales, right? I'm going to add it into this text. And let's just do a few months, okay? And go entire view. All right. And I'm going to just center justify this. Okay. So I can do a number of things when it comes to running total. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here on this text and go quick table calculation running total, right? And that's going to change everything. But I also want to add sales again, just so I can kind of see how it's doing it, right? So I'm going to bring the quick table underneath and we're going to just edit the font so that we don't get confused. This is a very um, good way to make sure you don't get confused. So you can actually differentiate between the two. Okay. If I go here and I go compute using, this is when this becomes really relevant. Okay, let me get that again. So if it's table across, right, it is going like that way. I should just point on the screen. So it's taking this plus this plus this plus this, right? And then it's terminating. It's just finishing up, right? Because it's just going all the way across if you pick the first one, okay? If I go table down, it's going to go this way, right? So you can see 4,000 plus 8,000, uh, 4,000, sorry, hang on. 4,800 plus 3,721 is 8,539, right? But I can go another direction. I can go across, then down. And what that does is it goes like this. Oh, that's probably not the best way. Hang on. It goes here and then it starts again here, right? But it's actually going like this and it's going in a zigzag all the way down. That's why this number is humongous, right? And then if we go further, right, I think you get the idea, but you go table then across or you can go pane down, right? Which means instead of it going all the way through, it just works at a level at a certain pane. So let's say across then down for a pane. What this will do is it'll go that, 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 that in this pane, stop, and then we'll start again from here. Right? That's why this one is 912, right? And this one's like that because it's going in all sorts of directions. That is what the compute using does and in terms of direction. So if you ever get a visualization where the final result's not quite right, have a look at that feature and hopefully it'll fix it. All right. So that is your running total. I don't think there's all too much beyond that uh, at the moment. Yeah, I'm probably not going to worry about that stuff. Running total is kind of like a basic. All right. The other one, which is really important, is um, moving average, okay? So let's bring in another date, okay? Let's go, uh, I want it quite granular, actually. So let's go week, and let's bring in this time profit, okay? And what I want to do is I want to do a moving average. So I'm just going to duplicate this. Um, I don't always duplicate. It's really just for teaching. Okay, and I'm going to make this a moving average. Now, um, I got a question a few days ago about kind of how a moving average works. So let me show you. Um, I'm going to grab some values here. All right, yeah, that'll do. Let's copy that and let's go into Excel. Okay, so we got some values. All right, so let's pretend this is one day after another, okay? So a moving average, let's say, and you have to say um, what time period moving average. So let's say I'd say a, a five-day moving average, right? Which is basically that group 
there. So what I do is I go equals average, right? And I do this group, okay? And that gives me a data point at that location. To calculate the next data point, it's the same thing. Average, the previous five days, do it again, right? And if you do that across the whole thing, you get a moving average. So let me go into formula mode and you can see it kind of going down. Tableau is doing the exact same thing for your data set, okay? So let's go back to Tableau, right? It is doing the exact same thing, but um, you got to... Um, make sure you tell it how far to go. Now, you don't just go backwards in time. You can also go forwards in time, right, in your moving average. So let me show you. So let's go um, quick table moving average, right? Um, you'll notice it doesn't change all that much. The default for the moving average time period is two days. So if, oh, uh, sorry, not two days, two increments, so two data points. Um, and if your data is like extremely granular or it just depends on your data set, it may look like nothing's happened. So um, if you go in here and go edit table calculation, here you can change how my, how much what the time period is. So let's say you go two days, three days, four days, five, right? And it'll keep calculating, keep adjusting that time period for you, right? So this is previous value, so it's all going backwards, right? And before I continue doing that, what I'm going to do as well is let's clear this table calc. Uh, no, we'll leave that in there. And we're going to go dual axis, right? Because I want to lay the um, moving average right on top of the other one. But first, I want to clear that table calculation just so we have a completely fresh one. Okay, so that's two time periods. And I'm actually going to switch this to day, right? I want it to be really granular. We'll just make this a little bit thinner. Okay, is day two, maybe day is too granular. Now we'll leave it there, we'll leave that in week. Maybe it's too granular, yeah. Okay, and what I wanna do is I wanna dual access this. Okay, so now they're overlaid and I'm gonna make sure that they're synchronized. Okay, I love the animation that they've added to this thing. I freaking looks sick, All right? And I'm going to just make the orange a little bit um, translucent because we want that blue one to kind of be a little bit more obvious, right? There we go. Okay, so moving average. Let's go back in here, edit, right? Now watch what happens as I increase this, okay? It's kind of flattening, but it's, it's doing more than that. What it's actually doing is it's smoothing the signal, right? It's smoothing it out. And the reason we do this in analytics is to... Um, try and find the underlying trend or the underlying pattern in your data. You'll notice in the one in the back, it's very spiky. So you don't really know like on a long-term scale, like what's it actually, is it actually going up? We don't know, right? So moving average is a great, a great way of doing this. A great example that you can apply this to is um, stocks and investing. So you got the stock market that's doing all sorts of crazy things day to day, but if you use a moving average, you can see the general trend of where it, where the market's going over a longer time scale. And they have analysis called 200 day moving average, 300 day, all sorts of stuff, golden cross and all sorts of stuff. Okay, we do that. You can see these numbers, which are called um, calculation assistance numbers. It tells you that direction, but we only got one, so no big deal. Okay, and you can see it's actually matching the underlying pattern. So if you're ever struggling with moving averages and going, well, why isn't it smoothing? It is because of your time period. And again, you can go forwards and backwards depending on your um depending on your layout of your data. Now, getting into panes and tables and cells and all that, let's do that. So let's say I've got a year period, or not even year, let's just do something else. Let's do country or region. Oh, I've only got one country. <laughs> let's go region, maybe I'll go four. Okay, so I've got four regions. This moving average, again, can be controlled to only stay in a pane. So you just go compute using, and you can say a pain, right? Pain across, which means it's only working in its own one. But because of the nature of moving average and that it kind of takes a time scale and it smooths it out, you won't really notice a difference all that much. Okay, let's do one more thing. I'm gonna add category here. So you can see it's starting. Yeah, the, if I get rid of kind of these bigger points, right? 
it'll you'll see it kind of stretch out a bit more or we can just go fit width make this super high right probably not as good right uh let's just i just want to get rid of the really high point so you can kind of see it's spread out so let's get rid of this okay so you can see it, it's getting rid of a lot of these spikes in order to see the underlying pattern okay all right i can probably do this all night long <laughs> and it probably won't show all that much okay let's just get rid of that one right so you can see that pattern and it's really to get rid of these spikes all right so that is how you use running total and moving average relatively straightforward um but if you still struggle get in touch with me in the comments um let me know what you're struggling with and i'll do another uh tutorial video on how to solve whatever particular issue you're in until then drop a like if you learned something from this video and i will see you next time bye